Okay, so here I'm going to go over a really simple example of, uh, <clears throat> of working with arrays in a SAS uh, EG. Um, to show this example, I'm actually going to code inside SAS EG. Um, so what is an array? Array is just really a set of variables uh, grouped to, uh, together during our uh, data step. So uh, that's a lot easier to understand when I show you rather than just tell you. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a program. So we go to File. New program. And this is where we'll do our coding. So we have to create a data step. So remember, when coding in SAS base, you have two steps data step, a step, or a procedure step, proc step. So for this case, we're going to use a data step. So first thing we do is call on the step, which is data. <clears throat> and then we can name it whatever we want. So I'll name it array, for example. And then don't forget your semicolon. Okay, so for this example, what I want to do is uh, create uh, some numeric variables, store those in a array, and then use this use a do loop to to use our existing array to compute a new array. Basically, just simple numeric computation. I'll just add some number to to the array that I'm working with. <clears throat> okay, so first we want to do is create our variables. So we're gonna create numeric variables. So use input. And then I'll call these variables numbers. And I'll just make five variables so I can literally just do numbers one through numbers five. And then our semicolon. And then I'll have a create an array to store these. And I'll just call the array. Oh, when you when you create an array, you type in array, and then it's the array name. So in this case, I'll call it numbers. And then in these brackets, we'll uh, we'll put how many places we want to how many elements are going to be in the array. So in this case, we have five because we have five of our number variables. And then close the bracket, semicolon. And then we'll do the same thing. This will be our new array that we're going to use. We'll call this computation. And we'll create the variables to be stored. Computation one through computation <clears throat> so once again, we created these variables. We created the array. The array is going to store these variables. So we're not doing anything crazy here. Okay, so now we're going to start uh, actually kind of computing this. To do this, we're going to use a do loop. Uh, the do loop is just, for this in this case, just an iterative process. So uh, it's going to go from 1 through 5. And for each, each uh, step, it'll take our number and then I'll, I'll, I'll compute it, I'll compute our new our array by adding something to our previous uh, array. So you'll, you'll see what I'll do right here. So the first thing when we do a do loop is, we say do, and then since this is an iterative process, we're going to have, uh, we'll create a variable i, and then we're going to have it go from 1 to 5 because we have 5 uh, variables. And when I say 1 to 5, we literally type in 1, 2, 5, and then semicolon. Okay, so we're going to define now our computation array by, we use these little curly brackets, and then, so it's, we're going to use i, so it's going to go, it's going to pull up computation, and it's going to go from 1 to 5, and we're going to set this equal to our old array that we created before, which is numbers, for each step, 1 through 5, and this is where I do the computation. I'll just add, say, two to this. So now now the computation array that we defined was empty, but now it'll be filled with uh, the numbers that we created that I still have to input manually, uh, and then we'll add two to those. Okay, and that's all we need to do. We'll just, and so when using the do loop, you want to end it. So you, to, you do do to start it off and to end it. Then we'll do a semicolon. Okay, so here is where I'm going to create the uh, manually input the uh, data um, that's going to be stored in the numbers uh, array. This is a uh, when, whenever you're going to manually input numeric values, you do uh, data lines or values in general. So you could, data lines semicolon. Then on the next line, then I can just put the the values that I want separated by a space. So I'll do five values uh, two. 
four, six, eight, ten. When you see when you see it uh, highlighted yellow like this, it means it's it's good. It's accepting it. But what you really want to make sure you do is put your semicolon on a different space. This once it, as long as it stays yellow, you know it's good. Now if you put the semicolon on the same line, then it kind of comments it out. So we want it to stay active. So we go to another line, semicolon. Okay, so this is what we've done here is just manually input it now. Uh, numeric values that we want to be stored in our numbers uh, array. So now when, when the uh, do process or the do loop goes through, uh, numbers will be, these numbers right here under data lines will be associated to this uh, array. And all we got to do now is run it. Okay. So let's see what happens. Click run. Okay, great. So you see, here's our first array that we created. Uh, numbers one holds two, numbers two holds four, numbers three holds six, numbers four holds eight, numbers five holds ten. And then here's the computation. Remember, we added two two units, I guess, to each of these uh, uh, two, four, six, eight, ten values. So computation one is associated with numbers one plus two, which is what we did in the do loop. So two plus two, four. Look over here, two plus four. 6, 6 plus 2, 8, 8 plus 2, 10, and 10 plus 2, 12. Now notice at the very end, <clears throat> we have that I, which is like that iterative little step thing. So that would, we just want that to be temporary. We don't actually want that to show up in our output. So what we can do is go back to the program tab. And after we've ended our do loop, we simply just type in drop and then I. And this will ensure that it doesn't show up in our, our outputted data. So click run. And here we go. We just get the arrays that we want and the eye is no longer there. So this is just a really simple example of uh, how, how you can use arrays. Uh, you, you, you'll know when to use them because it, it's just a, it'll save so much time when doing computation. It's a simple thing to do. It's very simple right now to do this manually. What I just showed it would, would only have five, five elements in an array, but a lot of times you won't have five elements, you'll have hundreds and hundreds or thousands of, of elements and this is where it really comes in handy.